I uh, just want to, again, um, you know, we don't take it for granted or make any assumptions seeing another full house here uh, on a beautiful November day. And uh, Buckeye Nation came out, and they were loud and proud. It was great. Um, and then also Military Appreciation Day it means a lot to our team and uh, the things that we do. And, and uh, again, we don't take any of that for granted, and we still have great respect for everybody who serves. And so uh, overall, I just want to, again, thank uh, on behalf of the whole team, the you know, Buckeye Nation and the military, uh, for a great day. I thought we came out and played well early and then, um, and then really you know, finished the game off well. But uh, this was a game where we felt like um, – you know, we went through a little adversity this week. Adversity uh, reveals character, and, and our character was at the forefront of this game. And I thought we came out and showed that uh, we're made of something special here. With that, we'll open it up for questions. Front row right here, Dom. Coach, as far as the adversity, uh, when you look at your defense, I, I think they had seven sacks. Just with, what was the mood of the defense when they found out, and uh, just, I guess, the overall with the team when they found out they were losing? You know, nobody flinched, and I think they all wanted to show that the, this is a team. This is a uh, defense, and this is a unit, defensive line unit, uh, who uh, it's more than just one person. And, and I think they, uh, they, you know, they had their chests out and were, were proud of the way they played today, and they should have. They, they played with an edge and something to prove. And any time our guys come out with something to prove, you know, we're dangerous. So overall, I thought we all had that approach, but especially the D-line. Over to the left. Bill? Yeah, it looked like you really wanted to kind of make a statement today in terms of I mean, the onside kick early up 14 nothing, and then the end of the half – call the timeouts was there a, a real mentality of okay we're gonna kind of put our, put our foot down today well well we always want to be aggressive um and that's just the way that uh, we want to be around here we did that at the end of the northwestern game as well and um but uh that's that's just our approach every every week but you know uh, i think that again you know when, when when this team you know faced a little bit of adversity you know we have an edge and we want to come after you and be aggressive and, and that's that's the approach and um, you know, I think that the guys, you know, really embraced that this week. And we talked to them early, you know, if, if we if the timing is right on the third kickoff and, and we have the opportunity, we're going to take that. And I think the guys feed off of that aggressiveness. And it was great. And then at the end of the half, you know, say, listen, we, if we get them three and out, we're going to go after the punt as hard as we could. And seven banks missed it, I think, by this much. We'll have to look it on film. But I think the guys like that. They feed off of that aggressiveness and confidence. And, and they, they, they kind of build on it as the, season, as the, as the game goes on. Front row uh, right there. Tim? Yeah, Ryan, just, just two quickies. Number one, is, is, do you have confidence that you're going to get Ryan, I mean, you're going to get Chase Young back? Um, yeah, again, I, this is not for me, for me to say right now, any yeah. of that stuff, yeah. Okay. And number two, Devon Hamilton in particular uh, seemed to be playing with an edge again. What could you even notice from your vantage point of the push he was getting? Obviously, two sacks kind of sums it up too, but just what he brought to the game today. I think Devon, um, you know, really has had such an impact on this whole season, but then also the game because he's an inside presence. And, you know, when he can push the pocket, it makes all the difference in the world. And then when he does what he did today, which is just defeat a blocker and, and you, know, uh, you know, get a sack, it just it changes the mentality of the quarterback. And I know coaching quarterbacks. When you have a guy in your face and in your lap, and especially early in the game, you don't want to stand in there anymore. You're, you're, you're not looking at the coverage. You're looking at the rush. And I think, um, you know, Larry's done a great job with Devon his development over, over uh, his career here. But he's one of the most improved guys on our team and was in the offseason, and now he's playing like that. So it's great to see a guy who's developed and having great success. Far left over there, Bill. Ryan, uh, we, we asked you a lot this year about first experiences, this being your first year as a head coach. You, you lose the best player in college football. I know you can't talk specifically about it, but – how do you approach it with your team? What experiences can you draw on to, to make sure it doesn't have an impact on your guys? Well, you know, this, this, uh, not, not necessarily this team, but a lot of guys in this team have, have been through adversity with, with our coaching staff, with, with me uh, uh, the, as the head coach. And so this isn't anything new. So our guys didn't flinch. And uh, you know, there was a part of, you know, it was a bunch of guys on our team like, okay, got some adversity, let's go. Let's, let's, pull, let's pull up this thing together. Let's, uh, let's show everybody how tight this team is and what we're really made of and, and show our character. And I thought that, that, came, uh, that, that came through today during the game. Front row right there. Austin? Ryan, when did you decide that Rashad could play both ways? We've been looking at that. You know, Rashad came in as a defensive lineman, and um, he's been doing some really good things. And he kind of came to us a couple weeks ago. And, um, and, and then based on the situation, we said, you know, let's just put him over there. And so last Wednesday, he went over and uh, did a good job. He, uh, he flashed a couple times. And so uh, he's very talented. And, uh, you know, moving forward, we're going to try to maybe use him in some different spots. Uh, over to the left, uh, Ari, please. Garrett Wilson was your leading receiver today. Um, seems like he just makes plays that are just physically 
inherent in him. I'm wondering, you know, you saw during a national championship run last year where freshmen on Clemson's team were stepped. I mean, are you starting to get a sense for this is a kid that can be a difference maker for you in bigger games that are coming down the line? You know, Garrett's still real young, but certainly his talent is off the charts. Um, and so uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves with, with Garrett, but um, you know, we think he obviously has a tremendous ceiling. And he's growing every week. He's understanding how to practice. He's understanding how to play within the offense. Uh, but I, I feel like his maturity level and him, you know, it's kind of like the way Chris Olave came on late in the season as well last year as a freshman. He's kind of into that swing right now where he's uh, got some games under his belt. And uh, the more games we can get like this with the ball in his hands and have an opportunity to make some catches downfield. You know, I, the one post got called back because of holding, you know, so he, he made some plays there. Um, but I think the big thing for him is just going to be how well do you practice, how well do you take care of the ball, what kind of discipline do you have during the week? Because if he does that, then, then he can be as good as he wants to be. When's it okay to get carried away with him? Uh, not right now. That's all I know. Okay, and one last other quick question. Um, can Blake put the ball where he put it on that onside kick pretty regularly? Like, how can you t just take us through the idea of – you know what? Uh, yeah, I mean, there. it was something we saw on film, and Matt Barnes saw, and um, you know, we we, we thought that uh, we, we had a real shot at it, and the guys practiced it during the week, and um, you know, it wasn't one of those things that was a home run every time we did it, you know. And then, but you talk about competitive excellence, that couldn't have been executed any better. I mean, that was as clean as it could be, and uh, it was cool to feel the excitement in the stadium. There was just something about that kick; it was like wow, and it was executed well, and and that was just like a, a feeling in the stadium you could feel when that was executed. And, uh, and then from then on, I just felt like the game kind of went like this. So uh, you know, anytime you can steal a possession in any game, uh, it's, it's, it's a game changer. And whether it's a block punt or something like that, you steal a whole possession from somebody, it, it flips the scoreboard. So we saw it, we executed it, and I thought it was well done all across the board. Front row middle. Joey? Did Chase's status at all affect guys' preparation and practices during the week and how you guys did what? Did Chase's status or did that have any effect on kind of practice or preparation for the game? No, not at all. And just one follow-up, how did you think Zach Harrison did filling in? I thought he did a good job. You know, unfortunately, he gets that sack, and then they, they, they call the unsportsmanlike because he kind of he flexed over the quarterback, and that was a learning lesson for, for Zach, you know, and we have to look at some of those penalties because that was uh, the amount of penalties we had today was, was embarrassing. So we got to get that fixed. But a few of them are, are learning opportunities, and that was one for Zach. You know, we actually – we brought him over, and, and the referee explained to him why he called that. And he, he didn't even realize he did it. He was so excited about getting the sack. And so you know, that's a young guy who has to learn to play with emotion. Don't let emotion play with him. Um, because we could have been out of that drive. That was, a, that was a drive we had, like, three penalties in a row. They score on us. And in a big game, that could cost us. So uh, learning opportunities. But overall, I thought uh, just from where I saw it, that Zach played pretty well. But we'll look at the film and, and grade him out and see if he was a champion. Over to the left. Doug? Ryan, what was your initial thought and reaction when you first heard the news about Chase, and how did you initially address it or get the news out to the team? Yeah, we, uh, you know, we were all just obviously uh, surprised by it all, and just tried to communicate to the team the best we could when it was appropriate, and then uh, you know set the plan for the, for the for the week, and we're just going to take it day by day. You just have to deal with the realities, but the last time you guys played. The whole country was talking about whether Chase Young is a Heisman candidate. You guys are number one in the country. And then this kind of thing just happens. Just, just what are your general thoughts about that? It does happen in college football sometimes. But just what is that reality like? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think we, we overthink it. You know, uh, Chase is dealing with, with a situation that, uh, you know, we're all supporting him with. And, um, you know, once we get some clarity on, on what's going on, then we'll deal with it from there. But until then, we focus on the team the best we can. And then one thing about football that's different than almost any other sport is a guy could roll an ankle, a guy could hurt himself, a guy could get a concussion at any point, and another guy has to step up. So uh, it's not like, you know, you don't have the mentality of the next guy up in football. You do. And so that's what we're going to do. And, um, you know, we're supporting him, and, and he's supporting us, and, and we're going to get through it together, and, and uh, he knows we have his back, and that's important. Uh, second row middle, Dylan? You had your starters out to start the second half. In the past, maybe they would have played a few series um, into the second half. What was the decision process into that and why they didn't play at all in the second you half? You know, yeah, we haven't played a whole bunch of football when you really think about it this year, you know, and uh, we, we had a long talk at halftime, but it's November. Uh, we still have a lot of football ahead of us, and we just thought that was the best move. Uh, over to the left, Rob. Ryan, going to let you respond to this. On TV, they were talking about the timeouts, the onside kick, and there was an implication that uh, this might have been personal for you, uh, the inference being that Maryland was somehow involved in the chase. 
uh, bringing that to light? Uh, no, nothing like that at all. No, okay. No, that, that, nothing like that at all. Nope, that wasn't anything uh, other than just I mean, we're always going to be aggressive in the first half. I mean, I, I feel like when you're playing the first half of any game, anything could happen in the second half. So you do the best you can to be aggressive. And then if it gets out of hand in the second half, you, you know, you're, you're smart about – you know, tempo. You're sh smart about maybe taking shots, especially in the fourth quarter, and you want to run the game, you know, run the ball, and show respect. And you know, I thought we did that. You know, I thought we ran the ball and kind of played slow in the second half. Uh, by no means uh, would I ever try to run up a score at all. It's just you know we're letting our guys play, and uh, so no, that that would be completely out of line. Get your feel on Justin Fields last year. Um, you guys had weren't throwing down the field quite as much as you are this year. Are you happy with his downfield where he's progressing? Well, I, 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 we challenged the pass game this week, and I thought uh, we came out aggressive. I th what did we throw it 25 times in the first half? I mean, that, that was, that's pretty aggressive for us. So that would be on pace for 50 in a game, and that was good, you know. And, and uh, we challenged the protection, we challenged <clears throat> the routes, we challenged everybody involved with it, and, uh, the decision making. And uh, I thought, you know, if you look at the first half, he was 16 to 25 for 203 touchdowns. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think that's right. You know, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good half. So if you double that, that would be a game. You know, and so that's one of the things that I think, you know, our guys, what they really uh, are focused on is winning. They don't care about the other things, but you know, that's, that's one half of football. So sometimes when you look at that compared to some of the other guys throughout the country, you know, you'd say, well, he, he only threw for 200 yards. I know he only played one half of football. You know, J.K. Dobbins uh, runs for 90 yards. He only played one half of football. So, but that's, that's, that's a good thing. And, uh, and, and I know that those guys uh, are proud of the way they played, and, and so are we. And final questions, uh, third row there, Dan. Ryan, what do you think it is about this team that's allowed you guys to just come out week in and week out with this same level of energy to be able to get on teams like this, even in a week like this where maybe you had some unexpected adversity? Well, I think that there's there's great leadership. I think that our coaching staff's doing a good job week in and week out of preparing these guys. Um, and we're playing with an edge. And, uh, you know, we, we have to continue to bring it each week, and we have to challenge the guys to do that. Uh, and we know uh, what happens if, if you don't. You know, if, if you don't bring it every week, you know, you can really get yourself uh, jammed up. And so, you know, we have to make sure that, that we're bringing it each week. But, um, but again, I think it goes back to our leadership. And, uh, you know, this is a team here. It was 52-51 last year in, in an absolute, uh, you know, fight into the fourth quarter. And I think our defense was tired of hearing about that for a year. So it was fresh on their minds. And I think we had a lot of respect for this team coming into the game because of that game that we played last year. And uh, so we, when we started fast, and I thought we played well throughout the game. Coach, I'm sorry, one more over yeah. here to the right. Clay. Ryan, you alluded to it a little bit. How is Chase doing? What's his state of mind right now? Yeah, he's, he's taking it uh, day to day, and he knows that uh, he has the support of his teammates, and he's going through a tough time. But again, ad adversity uh, you know, reveals character. And uh, I can tell you right now, he's uh, a special young man that, uh, that's handling his business the right way, and we're all proud of him. Great. Coach. Uh, he practiced last week, and he'll practice this week. Yep. Thank you very much, yep. Coach. No